everybody, it's Randy with Carchaeology, and I wanted to give you a little update as I'm hanging out here in the lab. Uh, we're going to have a little changing of the guard here, which is going to be kind of fun. I've got a couple of projects or a couple of vehicles that are on their way out, and obviously a couple of projects that tend to fill their spot. And uh, that's half the fun for me. I'm not one of those one car guys, obviously, if you've been watching this. Uh, I love to experience these cars, uh, give them my love and attention, um, make them fun and share them with the world. And then once I've done that, well, then I'm kind of done with that. I tell people my favorite car is always the next one. And uh, that that holds true, definitely. So one of the cars that's leaving is a, well, actually two of the cars that are leaving are uh, dune buggies. I've got uh, several fiberglass dune buggies, well, four total, one of which is a runner and three of which are projects. Uh, and I've decided that I don't really need three Project myers Manx buggies, so I have sold one of the projects uh, to a friend up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, and he's going to come down and pick it up in a couple of weeks and uh, be able to follow along with his build of that. So it's a perfect home for that. The other car that I'm uh, that's going to be leaving here is this one right here, DW Buggy, as I call it, which this one's going to hurt just a little bit because I've got to say it has been the most enjoyable fiberglass buggy that I've had yet. It just runs and drives so well. It's such a survivor. It's such an all original timepiece. Um, but I threw it out there with a solid price on it. And this gentleman in New, York, in New York absolutely fell in love with it. And so it will leave the lab and clear up a spot here for something else. As far as projects that have entered the lab, well, obviously the Rosensteel Coupe is here. I'm going to be spending some time and a bunch of money and making a big mess out of making this car beautiful. And I'm looking forward to that project. Um, but I've always got my eyes open for something else out there. And something that's got, well, just a uniqueness to it. Something that I know I will always remember having and uh, something that'll be a fun experience to share with you folks. So the car that I've got coming in, which should be here in the next couple of days, is another period piece. And it's something that will, well, I don't know, it's going to be a blast to share it with you. And I think it'll look awesome in the garage here, along with the other early cars that are here. And it's small enough that I could probably put it right here where the motorcycle is. So uh, the car that I have uh, swung a deal on is a 1925 Austin 7. Uh, they also call this car the Chummy. And what's fun about these little cars is that, number one, they're little. They're incredibly cute. It'll look neat in the garage with the other machines and stuff here. But they're also incredibly rugged. People use these things on trial events and drive them off road and do all sorts of different stuff. And so when I feel the urge to go bound around through the trails that are around here, I can do that with the Austin Chummy instead of the dune buggy, at least until I finish building the other dune buggies that are here. So those are projects that are soon to come. Uh, as well, once I'm done with the Rosenseal Coupe, I think I'm going to dive on into the Myers-Manx projects here. This particular one here is a very early car, a pre-tag Myers-Manx that I purchased from the original family. And it's going to be a really cool one to put back to the way that it was first built back in 1966. Um, and uh, bring it back and share that with the family. So that's that particular project. The other one here is one of the new bodies in an incredible color, and I plan on doing something super crazy with that, just getting wacky, doing kind of a dream car build. Another thing that's going on is I'm waiting for the original engine for the Porsche 356 to come back uh, from the rebuilders, and once that's done, I'll get that in the car. I'm going to go through the suspension and some of the mechanical bits of it. The goal is to make that car a super reliable, fun-to-drive machine. And those cars, anybody that's experienced one, knows how fun they are to drive. And that's really been my focus lately with the cars that I'm playing with. I want stuff that absolutely makes me smile when I get behind the wheel. The little Wolseley Hornet here, 
oh my God, what a blast. That was an impulse buy at an auction out in Scottsdale, but I could not be happier with this silly little car. I think the little Austin Chummy will be a great pairing for that. So I'll have two unique, weird, little British right-hand drive cars. I'm absolutely loving the Volkswagen Fastback. The car is incredibly clean, incredibly joyful to drive. I hope to get the uh, Rosensteel Coupe up to a point where it, too, is incredibly fun to drive. The Porsche Boxster, I cannot stress how much fun these cars are. If you have ever wanted a reasonably modern sports car or wanted to get a taste of the Porsche lifestyle without spending huge money, the Boxsters and the Caymans, holy crap, people go out and buy one. This car I have had more fun with driving, more driving enjoyment than any other vehicle I've ever owned. And I have owned way too many to count. Anyway, I absolutely love this car. Uh, I am starting to get it uh, pretty well worn in. Uh, I'm going to redo the interior in it. The original leather is kind of going bad. So I've got some new seat covers here that I'm going to install on those front seats. So I'm not getting, uh, you know, crumbs of uh, padding in my pants. But Porsche Boxster, loving that car. And of course, the 29.4 Roadster. I have always, always, always wanted a traditional hot rod. And when this one joined the collection, it really satisfied a long burning urge to have something of that period. And I'm really stoked with it. This is a car that I bought at a distance. I saw it. It really checked all the boxes for me. The colors were great. The materials used, the way the dash was done, all the little period details and stuff really super turned me on. And now that I've got it, I really love this car. I've brought it out to some events. It's been photographed now for a couple magazine articles. In fact, I just got one of the magazine articles in the mail yesterday from a French magazine called Nitro. Uh, they shot some photos of it out here in the valley and a really beautiful feature that I think I'm gonna have framed up and put on the wall with some of the other cars that I've had. Uh, the Carmen Ghia too. Oh my God, what a blast this has been so far. This is a great artistic project for me. Really had a blast putting this thing together. I maybe have a little more work to do to make it so that I can really hop in this thing and drive it any distance that I want to. But it starts reliably now. It runs and drives good. And, and it's fun to bounce around town with. In fact, I'm going to bring this car with me up to Monterey for Monterey Car Week. So I'm going to roll around through uh, Monterey and Carmel and hit a bunch of shows and stuff with the La Carrera Guia. And I think it'll be a crowd pleaser wherever it goes. So keep your eyes open for this car. If you're up there at Monterey Car Week, uh, I will be driving around with a big crap eating grin on my face, checking out all the niceties that Monterey Car Week has to share. Uh, let's see, the 34 Packard, obviously this is a family car. Love that car. It's not going anywhere. It is a wonderful car to take out and drive. Um, so that one obviously sticks around. And then the Honda CRX, the twin engine CRX. Now this one, I'm waiting for some exciting stuff to come out with that. We did some filming with this car uh, for Leno's Garage that hopefully is going to air pretty soon. It's also been photographed for Car and Driver magazine as well as a Japanese tuning magazine. And I hope to see those articles come back, you know, with a car that's super special, that's got a story like that. You know, I always like to keep a record of it or feel like I did a part in uh, spreading the story and sharing the story with the rest of the world. And then once that's happened and I've had my fun with it, well, then I can kind of let it go like I'm doing with the dune buggy. So at some point, the CRX will probably find a new home, but not until I get to see the its 15 minutes of fame happen. And then when that goes, gosh, I don't know what else is going to take the spot. I've got a couple of other cars outside as well uh, that I've been enjoying and having a great time with. I might trim the herd a little bit with that. And then obviously we're coming up to auction week up in Monterey. And while I'm not going to be raising my hand for anything super valuable there, I'm certainly going to keep my eyes open for a bargain. And if I clear out a little space, then I might have room for something. 
Well, in clearing out space, I've got more to do with that too. Still have piles of stuff from the clearance of a family home and I really didn't know where to put it. So it's taken up my space out here in the lab. In any case, uh, that is, well, crap, that's what I'm up to. And it's quite a bit of stuff. So please follow along to see the restoration of the Rosensteel Coop. That's going to be a really fun project. Again, I'm going to get creative with it. I'm going to do something really fun. I've got a vision for what I want this car to look like. I think it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be classy. It's going to be mild, but very attractive. Um, and I can't wait to make that happen. And I'm super excited about getting this silly little right-hand drive almost 100-year-old Austin touring car uh, to drive it around and see what it's all about. So there you go, playing with cars, having a really good time here in the lab in my uh, aging years. Not that I'm that old, but, uh, but really, this is my life. This is what I love. I love playing with these cars. I love the stories. I love the history. And I love how every single car gives me a different vibe, a different smile, a different thing to appreciate and to learn, and an opportunity to connect with enthusiasts that are into those particular cars and learn more about all of those communities. So uh, anyway, there you go. Walk around. Did I miss anything? Oh, the Austin Cooper. Yes, the 62 Austin Cooper. Uh, it was sitting back here in the back of the garage here. It was next to the Wolseley for a bit. I've now got it outside. And the plan, I think, is to bring it down to Sebastian since it's small enough it could fit at his place. And we're going to see if we can get this thing up and running and driving. Uh, and then once it runs and drives, well, I'll decide whether I want it more than the Wolseley or if I want two of them or if, I want to let that one go. In any case, I think I hit them all, and that's quite a bit. But again, who knows what tomorrow is going to bring. My favorite car is the next one, History on Wheels. I'm going to keep on digging them up and driving them until I can't anymore. Thanks, every for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed my miscellaneous ramble and walk around the lab here looking at the projects and the crap that I fill my days with. Thanks again. Bye-bye.